On this episode of the Bronze Medalist Podcast, we talk about Lita by Lita Ford. to another episode of the Bronze Medalist Podcast. I'm Kale. I'm OJ. We're two professional broadcasters. We like metal and we like to talk about it. And today we're uh, going back to 1988. Some glam metal. To, yes, talk about t- technically a self-titled album. Okay, yeah, it's her uh, third album. Uh, it's her third album, yeah. but uh, uh, from Lita Ford, mm-hmm. who is uh, an American guitarist, singer, musician, uh, right. uh, first come to prominence uh, as one of the guitarists for The Runaways mm-hmm. uh, with a number of other well-known yes. uh, female music- musicians, most notably Joan jo Jett. Jett. Right. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, this is what she went on to do after The the mm-hmm. Runaways dissolved. Yeah, and uh, I like that at some point her manager came up to her and said, you know, I just wanted to tell you that while you're recording this album, my husband sings. You know that, right? <laughs> oh, what was the was her manager um, Sharon Osbourne? Sharon Osbourne. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you do you know my husband sings in 1998? 1988. Someone yeah. in the in the rock and metal sphere, just like, do you know my husband? <laughs> heard of him? Yeah. Have you heard of him? Have mm-hmm. you heard any any of the music that he's done? <laughs> He's, he's relatively well known, but, you know, we never know who's going to know who Ozzy Osbourne is. <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, yeah. We'll, we'll talk more about uh, Lita Ford mm-hmm. in, in a while. First, yeah. how, are, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. It's, it's good. It's been a, all it's, things considered. All things considered. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm still in a great amount of pain. And, you know, I, I'm realizing that it's either the, the pain from whatever is happening with my, my nervous system, and my lower back and my mm-hmm. hip and my leg, uh, either that or the amount of dope I'm having to swallow <laughs> to 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 not to deal with it. So yeah. one of those two things is addling my brain brain entirely i'm i'm, I'm becoming I mean, it, it could be both it could be a combination of the two i mean today uh i uh, i uh i picked up max mm-hmm. and we went to go get like dinner yeah and so you know they had the the noodles and company and the um jersey mike's there mm-hmm. usually goes and gets noodles and company i go and get a sandwich mm-hmm. and this woman walked in and i'm like i saw her earlier today and mm-hmm. then and then my brain went you don't remember any of today. <laughs> you, you know you saw her, but you can't possibly remember where. When and where yeah. and why. And it was uh, our coworker Kelly. <laughs> who you've seen yeah. almost every day for the last 13 years. Yeah. Uh, no, longer than that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Eight, 18 years. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. No, it was not. No. Uh, but then it took me did like. Did you remember? Eventually, but it was long after she left. I'm like, oh, I went to the truck stop for breakfast and she works at the truck stop. Ah. Ah, That's see. where I saw her. Okay. So the second time I've seen her in a restaurant today, but I, I couldn't. I did not remember going to the truck stop or really <laughs> oh, any of the no. work I did this morning. I was said for the mob. I'm like, I guess I'll just get my sandwich and take my blank ass back home. <laughs> I think it was. I can't remember today. I thought mm-hmm. I was like that happened yesterday. I was like, no, that happened on Monday. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that was that's just my brain. Not working as it's supposed to all the time. Right. Well, and plus, uh, guys like you and I, we we both like routine. Yeah. R- routine is a big deal. Do the same thing. Right. But the problem with routine is, yeah. It's you, hard to remember when things actually happen. Uh-huh. When every day feels, you know, it is kind of the same thing. Exactly. Um, yeah. Uh, yesterday was a, a break in routine for me because I engineered a, a basketball game. Oh, sure. Uh, we well, had, like you know, over the board, like the audio for yes, basketball. You didn't yes. actually engineer. No, I was drawing up plans for <laughs> the stadium that right. it was played in. Exactly. Uh, uh, you know, I was really, um, I was really figuring out the, just the optimal setup for mm-hmm. basketball. And as it turns out, people have already done that. Right. Um, they've kind of figured out uh, the best way to play basketball. It's on a court. Mm-hmm. Uh, with a ball. With a ball. Uh, made it floor made of wood. Floor made of wood. I found out that's an important part. It is. is the floor being made of wood. Um, Although I've played on asphalt. Uh, Although, but every time I've tried out for the NBA, it was on a wood court. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, because it's hard to slide on asphalt. It is. It uh, really is. If you get knocked on your ass. Mm-hmm. Um, I found that... F- 
I I didn't find that out the hard way. But one of my test subjects did. Sure. Um, one of your genetically engineered test subjects. Yeah. That you grew it. Lost lab. all the skin on their back. Wow. Uh, they got also they're they're probably too big and muscular. Mm-hmm. I was just like, how big and strong is an NBA player? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I overdid it. You may have overdone it. Um, they're they're a bit are they a bit stiff? Are they slow? Are they fast enough? I mean, what's going on? Oh, they're terrifying. They're terrifying. Okay, they gotcha. are. Um, I I actually um, mm-hmm. I had to pl- I had to place a couple of calls um, because I d- I'm really worried about them getting out. Sure. Uh, and, if, and, and and if they get out, they could end up playing a game against uh, Michael Jordan and Bugs Bunny. I'm more yeah. worried about them playing a we could call it a game uh, sure. against the the uh, whole human race. Sure. Um, All right. I'm, I'm worried about uh, the greatest game, perhaps, that gotcha. could ever be played <laughs> uh, if they get out. Uh, <laughs> I think you should maybe write this shit down. Uh, <laughs> I, I think this could be an interesting novel content right they here. escaped genetically engineered bas- super basketball players that <laughs> escape and go on to <laughs> conquer the earth and exterminate the human race right i mean that's like that's a story a basic story of uh-huh. like genetically engineered monstrosity escapes and threatens the whole that's been done a billion billion times but right. they've never been basketball players <laughs> <laughs> and i think that would just be a running point of contention for everybody <laughs> was this seriously for fucking basketball well was it- <laughs> if it hasn't been brought up the yeah. you know the the third person narrator mm-hmm. will every once in a while be like the engineer, this this genetically engineered basketball player, yeah, right. just to remind the reader <laughs> what the origin this, these of these basket. creatures were. I mean, they have long since moved past any desire to play basketball. They, right. Their only desires are the destruction right. of mankind exactly. for the hubris that it took to create them. Um, but we're still going to say the word basketball a lot for yes, some reason. We can't. Well, we can't let people forget how it all started. Exactly. It's important to remember that. Uh huh. Um, we we got to make sure that you know as the monstrosities you know a, approach a, a new city with their their Jordans tightly laced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and their numbered jersey on. They, yeah, they. Uh, well, it, it's it's funny because they have a numbered jersey, but it also is like they they don't have a name above. Their name uh-huh. is the number, right? They, it's like a serial number, mm-hmm. uh, and they refer to each other as like oh uh, nine uh, five zero. You know, they right. uh, uh, they refer to each other by their numbers, like the Umbrella Academy. Kind um, of thing. Yeah, they're yeah. <laughs> so anyway, last night. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. While I was taking a break from my mad scientist shit, uh-huh. um, I also uh, uh, right. manned the board while we broadcasted a basketball game right. at the radio station. Yes. Um, and uh, that was uh, um, a bit frustrating uh-huh. yeah. at times. The, mm-hmm. the guy that we're, we're having uh, do the do the play by play. Was it our main guy? He, I think so. Yeah. I, I think he's our main guy. He. Uh, Really does not give you a lot of uh, <laughs> notice when there's a break about to be taken. Right. Uh, the way that he goes is like, and this is 60 seconds. Uh, that's a 60 second timeout. We'll be back. Right. That's all the notice you get. Uh, and mm-hmm. it's you, you really got to be listening. You really got to be on your toes. And then because we're doing it on two stations again. Yeah. Uh, we are uh, the the other stations being broadcasted on mm-hmm. sold a lot more ads for this. Sure. So they kind of need to take more breaks. But it got really excessive last night. The sheer amount of interruptions of the broadcast to like we're going to take a break. Here's a commercial. Here's you know, here's 60 seconds of commercial just for him to talk for 35 seconds and then go back to another 60 second commercial. <laughs> Break. And it, it, it's like there, there was a lot of that last night. And I I don't know a lot necessarily, but I, I do know um, that that's not pleasant to listen to. Uh, there's not a lot of domains where I feel particularly confident speaking with authority, but I feel like I can say that it would have been difficult to listen to. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a point where. Uh, he took a 
30, he, he took like a, a 60 second timeout mm-hmm. or, or a timeout was called. We, uh, you know, stopped the broadcast for 60 seconds to play some commercials. We came back and then 10 seconds after that, uh, a foul was called or a free throw and he Me. threw it to a 30 second. And, and it's like, just mm-hmm. let it just, just fill 30 seconds of audio. I, I, uh, there was a point where I, Felt I wanted to scream loud enough that he could hear me on the other <laughs> on the other end of town. Sure. You know, across across the valley from South Hill to North Hill. Mm-hmm. I, I wanted him to hear me because it was it was like you can't ju- like just talk. Just, you know, say stuff, say stuff. Talk to your color analyst like like, uh, you know, <clears throat> get some commentary going. Make some content. That's what you're here for. That's what we're paying you for. Mm-hmm. Um, it just it, it felt frustrating, uh, and I, I vented about it a little bit this morning, and I am I am doing it again now sure. because it was it was. I feel like maybe other people would not find it so frustrating as I did. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was not as uh, unpleasant to listen to as I think it would be. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I get really like. Uh, like, like a couple years ago when we did it for the first time and right. the, the guy who was doing our play by play is, you know, a, uh, incredibly storied broadcaster, uh, mm-hmm. throughout North Dakota, right. extremely experienced, absolutely fantastic at what he does. Uh, and there was constant community communication between the two of us whenever basketball games were going on about what we needed, you know, could you do this much time? Like Mm -hmm. it was great. And I think the games sounded amazing. Um, now he's retired. He's yeah, he's retired, but like the, uh, I I was really proud of those, those games Mm -hmm. because I thought they sounded really great. And it like, it feels really good to absolutely nail it every time. Um, Mm -hmm. And like when I when I was in college, one of my favorite things was uh, doing like technical directing, mm-hmm. like manning the switchboard and and pressing the buttons, switching the cameras, really nailing the transitions. Like I, I really liked doing that. It feels really satisfying to me. And that's kind of the closest thing mm-hmm. that we have. These basketball games are kind of the closest, most kinetic thing that we have in radio. Right. Um, anymore anymore and and like it feels really good to nail it and last night i just did not feel like i had any (laughs) opportunity at all to nail it right like there was nothing i could do it was out of my hands and i normally when something is out of your hands the best thing that you can do is just accept that it's out of your hands there's there's nothing that you can do about it just you know accept that it's not going to sound the way that you want it to Mm -hmm. and move on but also it was so clear to me how it could be better and how it could sound better. And it would be simple enough to institute those changes. And that's what frustrated me. Yeah. Cause it's like, okay, it's out of my hands, but it doesn't need to be. Um, but I, you know, I didn't have the guy's phone number and I wasn't going to be calling up to Sonny and being like, <laughs> you know, uh, that would have required confrontation and mm-hmm. that I cannot do. Right. That, uh, that is not a tool in your box. So, yeah, it was it was a little frustrating, but I, I got paid. So, yeah, uh, or I will get paid for right. it. Uh, so, you know. Well, I guess I can't complain too much. Yeah, uh, yeah, nothing. Yeah, these these are first world problems. These, yeah, yeah, they are. They <laughs> yeah. they definitely are. But mm-hmm. um, these are the problems. Uh, I feel like that's a quote from something. I don't know. I, don't know. I'm rem- I feel like that came from somewhere, but I don't have any idea where that was. Um, I'm trying to think of anything at all. That I have done that we could talk about. But no. Uh, my brain is now just filled with ideas of basically basketball space marines <laughs> is what they were, were what they are. Yeah. They're right. space marines from Warhammer, but created to play basketball. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, do they have I wonder if they have basketball power armor. No, that's the that's the genetically engineered football players that I made. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, they have they have power armor because I'm like, well, 
uh, football players wore those pads. So I could just make, you know, uh, extremely advanced uh, powered exoskeletons. Uh, right. uh, that will protect them as they hit each other at 50 miles an hour. And and these, the basketball players, are just millionaires in shorts. Yeah. I mean, they're just, and they're also uh, the apocalypse. Yes. Yeah. Uh, right. Well, well, they're not millionaires because they don't have money. They don't, they don't have any concept of money. But, but they have it because they play in the NBA. Well, no, I've created these, these men uh-huh. from, I have grown them in vats. Right. Uh, and when they escape, they don't go to the NBA. I, I mean, they so, might start with the NBA. Right. Okay. That's, that's their introductory scene. Okay. okay. Is there's a, there's like a Lakers game mm-hmm. going on and, uh, the, like they're, you know, they're playing. It's like, it's like, you know, it's the fourth quarter. It's a really tight game. And then. Uh, like Bane in The Dark Knight Rises uh-huh. when he comes out onto the football field. Sure. It's like that. Um, and uh, uh, they emerge and they're just like, your version of this game is pitiful and weak. We shall show you the true basketball. And they chuck a basketball right. through someone, like some famous basketball player's body. Right. Uh, like it just it just goes straight through them. Yeah. Uh, uh, I couldn't think of a single current famous basketball player. Um, like LeBron or something. Well, yeah, I was I think I was going <clears> to <throat> say LeBron James. But I actually, I can't. Who does LeBron James even play for anymore? Does he play for the Lakers? It's the Dodgers or something? I don't even know who he plays for anymore. Uh, do, or is he still with the Cavaliers after he went back? Uh, I don't even. Yeah, I don't know yeah. who LeBron James he plays, plays for. The for. Packers, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, that's what you said because the Dodgers are a, base, <laughs> yeah. are a baseball team. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, there's, he, you know, this, this genetically engineered basketball man right. throws now that's a failed experiment, by the way, is a uh, genetically engineered basketball man, a hybrid of man and basketball. <laughs> um, right. there's only one that is, that remained alive that against all odds mm-hmm. Did not die several minutes after it was animated. Screaming. Um, and, and it's right. named Spalding. Um, and uh, it, it um, it is an abomination, but also right. it uh, it's an abomination. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. But it like it's horrifying to behold. But also, it has no hate in its heart. Right. It no. It knows only compassion. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily know how to express it properly. Yeah, well, I, I think <clears throat> mm-hmm. I think it's one it like it doesn't physically do anything harmful, right. but it's just it's so horrible to look at. And it's only capable of making, you know, scary noises uh-huh. to where in order to understand what it's trying to say, you have to like hook it up to a computer that can like analyze its brain waves. Mm-hmm. Um but and that's in stark contract with these anatomically contrast, perfect yeah. godlike beings uh, that uh, have only hatred in their hearts and basketball. Right. Yeah. And and hang time. They they yeah. know nothing more mm-hmm. than a pure, incredible hate for all that is humanity mm-hmm. and also how to do a really sick dunk. Right. Those are the two things that they know. Uh, the mm-hmm. only two things that drive them forward. They roll up into Chicago one afternoon. You just do a triple double on the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, um, yeah. Uh-huh. All right. I'm going to get writing here once we uh, finish talking about uh, Lita Ford. Uh, by, so, by the way, you have to work. You have to work curly from the Globetrotters into the story somehow. The Globetrotters are going to be in there. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> my first, mm-hmm. my first thought is that <clears throat> the Globetrotters are going to be presented. The, see, here's what it's going to be. Uh-huh. Right. So 
the government mm-hmm. is like, we got to figure out how to defeat these basketball, these, these, you know, basketball titans, these, <laughs> these, uh, uh, incredible invincible men. Uh, th- we only know that they hate humanity, but they love basketball. So mm-hmm. we got to bring in somebody who knows about basketball, bring in the Harlem globe trotters. They'll know what to do. And in the, the, it's really presented like uh-huh. the globe trotters are, get, are, are one, you know, our one hope, our best chance, mm. and the a second into the first confrontation, they're, they're all annihilated. I mean, uh, up, up until that moment, you've actually written an episode of Futurama. There was actually, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, uh, they the globe trotters are annihilated, like right. like uh, Omni Man at the end of the first episode of Invincible, right? Going through the the other superheroes, like it's it's. It's that level of just absolute carnage. Mm -hmm. Um, And the government is just like, oh, God, what are we going to do? And the key to it all. Yeah. Spalding. Spalding is Spalding turns out to be Mm -hmm. the key, the solution. Right. uh, To defeating uh, his really his his siblings, his uh, his younger brothers, Mm -hmm. because he was, you know, he was a a prototype prototype almost. Yeah. 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 Uh. <laughs> so Lita Ford. <laughs> this is this is the this is the laugh of a completely deranged individual. Right. This this is I don't know like I don't know what has happened to me tonight. <laughs> that this I, I think I think is the tangent that I've gone on. The, the laugh would have been better had you talked about the last part in this voice. <laughs> if I had turned into Emperor Palpatine. Right, exactly. Uh, <laughs> and then gone into the cackle. <laughs> right. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> God. So Lita Ford is uh, American. Uh, she's born born in England, right. apparently, but uh, is American uh, guitarist, vocalist. Uh, we mentioned Earlier in 1975, she was brought in to form uh, the Runaways. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, have you ever seen the? Uh, I recommend watching the movie about that. By the way, it's a good uh, movie. I have never seen that movie. No. Um, what was the the Runaways uh, big hit? Cherry Bomb. Cherry Bomb. Yeah. That's right. Uh, and uh, yeah, that was that was like their only big hit, basically. Sure. Um, and then eventually, band dissolved. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the members go their separate ways, go have their own careers. Lita Ford uh, starts a solo career uh, doing glam rock. Right. uh, And has continued to to do that Mm -hmm. uh, uh, since the the late 70s. Um, She's 64 now. Yes. And uh, this was her third album, came Mm -hmm. out in 1988. uh, And... That's kind of uh, all that I know about it. Uh-huh. Um, what's your sort of experience with with Lita Ford? Well, in 1988, uh, I was um, 14 years old. I see. And, and this came How, out. Hmm? Would the album cover of this appeal to a 14 year old boy in 1988? <laughs> yes. Yes. I was a okay. horny 14 year old <laughs> boy in 1988. Uh, but actually it was OK. And I did have the album cover as a poster. But that's aside you from got, that. Look, you gotta be honest. Sure, I mean. Also, you were 14. I was like. 14. But, you know, also the music on this really appealed to me as yeah, well. I mean, it of was. Of course a, it would. It was uh, a little more mainstream yeah. than, than I was accustomed to listening to. But I was like, this is rock and roll enough. It's got that feel to it. There's a couple of really catchy songs on yes, this. Yes, there are. Uh, and, and there's one that, that to this date my brain has ruined for the reason I know you know why. Oh, is it Kiss Me Deadly? Yeah. 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 So we have a thing. Yeah. Um, that you introduced to me. Uh-huh. Uh, where anytime someone in a song says kiss, mm-hmm. uh, you replace the word with fist. Correct. Uh, so we have fist me deadly. <laughs> yeah. Uh and you know so on and so forth there right. are a great many things you could do with that what was my version of that i think it's in country music specifically you replace the word love with fuck 
<laughs> because 90% of the time yeah. when you, when someone in a country music song says yeah. love, uh-huh. they're referring to fucking. Uh, right. They're referring to having sex. I'm like, going to love you all night I'm long. Gonna lo- yeah. yeah. I'm going to fuck you. Like, <laughs> like, just, yeah, just say what you mean. I'm going to fuck you forever and ever. Uh... <laughs> Forever and ever, amen. And then uh, the fist one is really good yeah. for the Thompson Square song. Are you going to fist me or not? Right. That one's really good. Yeah. Um, which is but, which is a, 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 a groom singing to his bride, isn't it? I think so. I, I think I, that's. I think that's. Uh, I think that's what it is. I yeah. now pronounce you. Uh, man and wife, you may, you may fist, fist the groom. <laughs> you may fist the groom. Yeah. Oh, there yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because it's because they have two vocalists in that right. band. They're, they're a husband and wife. Band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's Thompson times Thompson. Yes. Right. Um, Thompson Square. Uh, with a fist, good night. <laughs> Lady Antebellum. You Lady got A. To. Lady A. Fist and angel, good morning. <laughs> all right. <laughs> We're all right. Enough with this with this riff. Right. Yeah, um, okay, all right. Moving on. So Lita Ford. Uh uh, did you like continue listening to was cause I know there was some hiatuses in her career. Yeah, there there were hi hiatus. Uh, hiatus. Would you say hiatus? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if hiatus hiatus. Is, I don't know if it's Greek or Latin. Hiatuses? Perhaps. Right. Uh, I, I think I had a copy of the prior album to this, but I got it after I got this one. Okay. Uh, the one uh, with uh, On the Edge of a Broken Heart. Um, great, great, also a great album. Okay. But, I, you know, I and I'm bad, I'm a bad fan. If I'm your fan, you have got collected nothing because <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm really bad at, you know, being obsessive about Yeah, you just move on to something I else. I move on to something else. That uh, happens way too often. I mean, that's not the worst thing in the world. It's it's not, but I, mean, I really should have followed up because there are a lot of artists that have made, you know, more great music. And then I just didn't hear about it because a, a lot of the stuff that, as you know, that mm-hmm. I listen to is not stuff that's going to be advertised anywhere. Yeah. Necessarily. In fact, a lot of the times I find out a band I like to put out a new album is because you sent me a text message. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to do that uh, at the uh, towards the end of this episode, I think. Really? Um, oh uh, yeah, Ben has a new album coming out. Uh, I don't think that's what you think oh. it is. Uh, I'm I talking guess, about for the episode next right. week, which will still be in February. Well, so, no, no, will it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Today is the 20. Oh, it's February. Yeah, that's why. I okay. Well, it's still. I can still do it for, want, for reasons. I can still do it either way. Right. Um. Let me, yeah, let me look at the, it will be the 1st of March. Yeah, it'll be the 1st of March Wednesday. next Wednesday. Fucking February. I know, I hear Fuck you. Fuck you, February. Yeah, only shitty things happen Fucking in February. Fucking Gregorian calendar bullshit. Mm-hmm. We just, just have the calendar be wrong. Uh, <laughs> and the, you know, the moon cycles and uh, uh, summer and winter be inaccurate mm-hmm. all the time. Who needs this one short month? <laughs> Uh, I d- it is weird to me that uh-huh. they decided to we're just going to make one short one month shorter than right. the other ones instead of being like wh- instead of making one month three or four days shorter. Mm-hmm. Why don't we make three or four months one day shorter? I don't know. Well, we do actually. Oh, yeah. We, have 30, we, some all, days have 30, we already some do that. But some yeah, 31 spread the love around. Why is why I, is it all got to be February? I don't know. Um, I guess February is maybe special. And well, it has Valentine's Day, uh-huh. so if it's we're thinking of this as it. as love, mm-hmm. then uh, you, you want to keep it short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I uh, yeah. I don't know, fucking February. But anyway, um, so uh, Lita Ford. Uh-huh. Uh huh. <laughs> the uh, something that I uh, found out. Uh, known for playing mostly bc rich guitars yes uh because when i when i think of like bc rich you think of the warlock and right. then for me immediately it's chuck Schuldiner. sure is is what i think for some reason i think of the warlock as being a very death metal guitar very death metal guitar uh i i, I wouldn't associate it with glam metal uh for me glam metal is all you know flying v's uh, it is for Fly- me. For me, I see the Flying V as a very glam metal guitar. Flying V or the the Gibson um, 
Oh my God, what's it? The SG. The SG. It's an SG, yeah. It's weird for me because I associate the SG with Doom Metal for some reason. Well, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know why in particular I associate the SG with Doom Metal, but I do. Uh, uh-huh. What the hell? What did? What kind of guitar did Tony, Tony Iommi play? Which, by the way, she was brief. Uh, Lita Ford was briefly engaged to Tony Iommi, right? Uh, which I did not know. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, do you know what kind of guitars Tony Iommi? You know, off the top played? of my head, I don't. He, he might not have had like a particular one that he stuck to. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, so uh, does this album slap? Occasionally it does, yeah. Yeah, occasionally. It's uh-huh. it, for the most part. I mean, like you said, it's a bit. It's a bit mainstream. It's it's probably much more glam rock than glam metal most of the time. Yeah. Um, there are definitely some some heavier moments uh, on the album for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I think. Uh, let's see. Um, I th- can't catch me is probably. It, I think it was a little a little bit heavier than some of the other ones. Right, it was uh, a little faster, a little bit more track number punk, two. Kind of this, yeah. kind of punk almost uh, in tempo. O- almost has a power metal. Sort of maybe almost a, like a, a sub thrash sort of feel. Yeah, 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 a little, a little faster, a little heavier. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Kiss Me Deadly is in a, a very poppy track. Very poppy track, and that was this, uh, her most popular the song to date. Lead single off of this out, or mm-hmm. I, I, I was reading that it may that it that Close My Eyes Forever is actually well maybe more popular. Um, I think it's, but it's definitely, those are the top two. Yeah. Uh, but, um, under the gun is kind of a heavier track. Yeah. Um, but it sort of, you know, kind of alternates between kind of sort of heavier stuff and stuff that's a bit more kind of pop rock, uh, right. but glam, a, a glam, you know, uh, filter, mm-hmm. uh, over some, some kind of catchier rock to it, but there's some pretty kick-ass solos on here as well. Yeah. She's a great guitar she's player. Fantastic guitar player. Yeah. Um, I totally, for, I realized when we started recording that I didn't have my board cause I didn't write anything on it. Oh, um, yeah. Cause it also it wasn't in this room. Um, <laughs> right. Because of D and D. Yeah. Uh, I, I should maybe it's so, I'm so fucking lazy mm-hmm. where when I have that problem of like, Oh, I forgot to bring it back in here because it's out there. Mm-hmm. My thought is, well, I should just buy another one. That's actually what I would do immediately. Yeah. I would do that. Im- that's why, that's why I have 15 pairs of reading glasses. <laughs> it's just like, cause so I can, you can have them spread out across this entire city. Exactly. You have stashes, a cache there- of reading glasses that you can, that you yes. can open up. Yes, uh, and and I use and what happens is because uh, I have a cachet of them. What I do is I use them to burn churches. <laughs> Reading. Oh, <laughs> he's talking about Varg Bard- Vakarin yeah. who has changed his name to Louis Ga- Louis Cachet. Yeah, one of the worst people. Uh, if you don't know who Varg Vakarin is, uh, good. Um, yeah, the, <laughs> y- your life is enriched for it, um, not knowing who he is. But uh, in any case, uh-huh. um, I totally forgot. <laughs> Again, my head is just filled with ideas about these genetically engineered ba- super basketball men. Right. Um, <laughs> but uh, the thing that I was talking about is something that I will figure out by the end of this sentence because the thing that it was... No, I didn't... It didn't I work? Tried, I tried to summon it. Uh, I, I think I... <laughs> <laughs> it's it's done. It's over with. John Birch um, guitars, by the way. Uh oh, is that's what that's what Tony Alman uh, played? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um Oh, the bo- the boogie board thing is what oh, I was right. yeah, yeah, talking yeah. about. I didn't have my board, which normally I uh-huh. write, you know, uh, uh, reviews on. I don't know if I would have been able to find much review data on this mm-hmm. being from 1988 and no, there being uh, there's a, not a lot of data. Something that I can't imagine people in the age of the internet have gone back uh, very much to to talk about. Uh, Right. Uh, this is way pre-internet as a, as a retrospective, like we're going to, you know, uh, a sp- like Sputnik or Pitchfork or something being like, we're going to take a look back at at Lita from Lita Ford in 1988. Like, I, I don't see that uh, having been done. So I'd 
don't I don't have any data mm-hmm. uh, to share. What's what's your favorite song on the album? I, I think, you know, uh, I tried to th- think back as to, as to w- what that would be. What. And I, I keep coming back to close my eyes forever. I mean, it's, it's a really good it's, song. It's a great song. And also, Ozzy sounds r- amazing. On he it. does. He I think I mean, Ozzy's always been a really like a genuinely very good singer. Right. Um. Like I I, I, I really like his voice. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, and like, yeah, he's but he sounds fantastic uh, on Close My Eyes Forever. He sounds really, really mm-hmm. good. And, you know, they have determined that he is actually a superhuman yeah, that, I've, I've heard about th- yeah for various different reasons, I believe. Right, now he's he's uh, he's immune from the negative effects of alcohol and 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 drugs and things. Basically, yeah, which, which makes makes him a, a a hard person to 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 live with because yeah, it just doesn't really do much. <laughs> yeah, uh, it gets him drunk, but it doesn't. But as far as like damaging his liver and whatnot, right? Yeah, uh, but um, uh, uh. uh Caffeine, though, on the other hand, apparently he is ex- incredibly sensitive to cath- to caffeine. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm not surprised uh, to learn that about Ozzy Osbourne, a man who has survived doing an incredible amount of drugs, right? And drinking a very large amount of alcohol. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, close my eyes forever. Really good track. I uh, I would say under the gun. Yeah, under the gun. My favorite a great one. Song. One of the one of the moodier, one of the heavier tracks on the album. Right. And, and it's like I kind of wish there were two separate albums of this. Like mm-hmm. I kind of wish there was one that was more that that was you know fully explored two separate sides uh, of this. One that was all like pop rock mm-hmm. uh, that I feel like would end up sounding like a slightly more rock focused. Um, oh no. Why can't I remember? We've talked about her on the podcast. Um, why can't I remember her name? Oh no. Yoko uh, Ono? No, no, oh, not Yoko uh, Ono. Um, um, we've done her, one of her albums. Ah, uh, who 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 brought her? Do you remember? You. Oh. Uh. Oh no, I can't. Uh, it's, I, and I can't even remember the name of any one of her s- girls. Just want to have fun. Oh, Cindy Lauper. Cindy Lauper. I, I don't know why my my brain conjures uh, like a fully poppy version of of Lita Ford as mm-hmm. sounding l- vaguely like Cindy Lauper. I think that's just because I don't, <laughs> I don't <hear> have that, <laughs> a lot of I. Well, because for me, when you listen to like the vocal hook of Kiss Me Deadly, mm-hmm. something about that, I don't know, feels vaguely uh, similar ethos. I don't fucking know. I'm, tra- right. I'm talking out of my ass right. right now. It's just a, a gut feeling I got. I don't know. And if that's your feeling, that's what belongs to you, man. Sure, it does. Mm-hmm. Uh but yeah, under the gun, like uh, mm-hmm. the other thing that I, I I would like to see the other side of mm-hmm. just like fully explore something that is darker and heavier and is leans more metal. Right. Uh, uh, direction. Like like uh, for, with Fatal Passion or uh, Falling In and Out of Love. Yeah. And- some something that really leans hard in, in that direction. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd be interested to, to hear. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, what uh, what what metal are you going to bestow Upon this album, like Maz Kanata to Chewbacca at the end of the 2019 film made by Lucasfilm, uh, uh, which is owned by Disney, uh, Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker. I haven't explained the context of the Maz Kanata thing in a very long time, so I felt like I'd sneak that in there. Are I you, really snuck that in there, you know. Are you okay, Ken? <laughs> Obviously you not. A, you doing all right? Doing all right obviously, there, buddy? obviously not. Um, uh, I mean, it's it's a high silver for me. For me, yeah, I'll call uh, it's a silver for me as well. Yeah. Uh, nothing on here was like I gotta listen to more Lita Ford, but it was, it was fine, mm-hmm. perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. So the thing that I was gonna bring up to you, and you very well might have listened to it, and we just haven't talked about. It. I know I haven't listened to it. Album um, came out last year. Uh, a band that we were both like pretty into uh, for a while and then uh, just kind of like fell away as other new shiny things came up. Uh, Highlung put out an album oh! last year. Uh, it's called Ooh. Drief. Uh, so I figured my original thought was like, oh, well, next week is going to be 
still female February, but on the cusp of March. No, it'll yeah, just be March. Right. But uh, which is fine because we usually do not metal stuff in March. Yeah, and that's that's that was my other thought was like it's both got you know a heavy female presence and uh-huh. it's uh, not metal, so it'd be a good right. like sort of transition. It, it still works as that. You know, it's it's I, there's one thing I love about them is that they seem to be a band that would appeal to someone who loves metal. Yeah, because it's 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 kind of hitting that same spot of I, it. I think that's a pretty large portion of their fan base. Right, generally is people who uh i think they kind of bridge the gap between like uh metal heads and like uh sort of the earthier side of like the festival crowd like the, like the burning man crowd right uh they sort of bridge the gap between metal heads and and sort of the burning man type crowd mm-hmm. uh and uh, yeah, they just have really, <laughs> really interesting sound between the Burning Man crowd and the crowd of people who would actually set a dude on fire. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. for sure. Right. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about Drief by High Lung. Yeah, uh, next week. All right. Uh, until then, why don't you uh, go ahead if you so desire? Uh, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, just search Bronze Medalist, and I'm sure you'll find us there. Why not? <laughs> Every week I have less and less uh, coherence. Co- well, yes, but also every week I have less and less patience to to plug our social media pages. Wow. Um, otherwise, why don't you go ahead and subscribe yeah. to our feed on whatever you're using to listen to us right now? You know, actually, if you just want to show up, you know, bring some beer. No, don't do that. Do not find me. Kale's address is no. <laughs> Do not seek me. Do not perceive me. Stop on by. Also, if you stop on by, don't open the door that says basketball experiment. <laughs> For the love of God, you must not let them loose. <laughs> It's a blast door for a reason. <laughs> there are 14 heavy locks mm-hmm. that are all computer controlled. Right. But if for some if somehow you blunder through it like a video game protagonist in a horror game, right. that's like going through the abandoned facility and just pressing buttons because uh don't do it, I beg of you. <laughs> the world will never be the same. <laughs> or anything. <laughs> Nothing will ever be the same. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you very much for listening to another episode of the Bronze Medalist Podcast. I'm Kale. I'm OJ. Congratulations. Congratulations. Jedi would tell you. (laughs) Darth Plagueis the Wise was a legendary Sith Lord. So powerful that it was said he could influence the midichlorians to create life. (laughs) Followed by silence. (laughs) And again, it's just like, what? What the fuck is going on right now? What? Chancellor, why do you sound like that? What do you mean? I've always sounded like this ever since the first movie. <laughs> <laughs>